I was on a bus from New York to Boston, and sitting next to me was a professor of philosophy. And we were chatting, and I explained at the time I was doing my MPA as a mid-career student. And the problem with an MPA is people hear MBA and they get really excited, <laughs> but it's an MPA, and that means Master of Public Administration. She asks, what do you want to do with that? I reply, I'd, I'd like to get into politics, become a politician. And she looks at me blankly. Really? You? Why would you want to do that? And this bothers me because, well, I, I tell this story to my mentor and it doesn't surprise her at all. Her expertise is women in public policy. And she says, Jen, when people think of politicians, you're the exact opposite of what people think of. You're young, you're female, you're passionate, you're smart. Yeah, why on earth would you want to get into politics? <laughs> but that's exactly why I want to get into politics. It, it can be better, right? It must be better. When we think of a politician, we shouldn't just think of a cranky old white guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I wasn't raised in a political family. I was brought up by a single mom who taught me and my sister to value hard work and the potential of Canada. I decided to pursue a career as a TV host and reporter to get a better understanding of the world around me. And I did exactly that. But after over a decade of asking questions, I wanted to do more. I wanted to find answers. So I made the move into politics. What I discovered going door to door in this very community is that so many people are disappointed and disillusioned with politics. And in the city of Toronto, can you blame them? <laughs> From the local to the national to the international level, there's no shortage of political scandals. Now, while canvassing in social housing, where people are very vocal about politics, and can actually point to the issues, I came across a sign. It's very common to see signs on doors that say, no flyers, no solicitors. And maybe even some of you have signs on your doors that say, no flyers, no solicitors. And maybe even I once used to have a sign on my door that said, no flyers, no solicitors. But there I was, and this sign, it was a bit different. It said, no flyers, no neighborhood bulletin, no look, no dial a battle, no pizza pizza, no religions, and no political bullshit. <laughs> so I wanted to knock on the door. But <laughs> I decided it was probably best to move on, and it's important to respect people's wishes. But I agree. No political bullshit. I get it. People don't like politics. It's hard to like politics. I sometimes struggle with it myself. And I've met so many people at their doors who tell me, ah, it's all the same. It's never going to change. Someone once said to me, I don't do politics. So let me present to you the top three ways to hate politics. Number one, define politics narrowly. A recent study by Samara found that only 40% of participants had a conversation about a political or societal issue in the last year. 40%. Politics is all around you. It's, it's what you eat, it's what you drink, it's the roads, it's the right to marry, it's where you work or where you don't work. How can you not be talking about these things? Politics defined broadly, that would be like hating everything. Number two, play defense instead of offense. A video connected to Toronto Mayor Rob Ford made headlines in May 2013, and it inspired something called a crack starter. And this was a crowdfunding attempt to raise enough money to buy the alleged crack video featuring our mayor, uh, but that didn't end up happening. But the crack starter raised close to $200,000, and that money was donated to Toronto organizations working with people who are living with addictions. 
nearly $200,000 raised to get someone out of office instead of into office. <laughs> now, that's enough money to run two very impressive campaigns for members of parliament, to run four to six campaigns for city councilors. Imagine if we took all the time we spend complaining and eye-rolling about politics and we invested in candidates and ideas we believe in, better representation and supported women and people of color and working class families. And number three, the number three way to hate politics, don't vote, don't even show up. And unfortunately, you won't be alone. In the last federal election, we saw the lowest, second lowest voter turnout in Canadian history, 54%. And the election that elected Rob Ford, 54% voter turnout. So the next time you hear someone complaining about Rob Ford, there's a 50% chance they didn't even vote. But what a privilege to not be able to vote. In 2007, I had an incredible opportunity to be in Sierra Leone for their election. And this was the first time in the country's history a democratically elected president was to hand over power to another democratically elected president. And I remember driving down the streets of Freetown in the morning, I was in a shared taxi, and there were all these people coming onto the street, and I thought, oh, there must be a fire or something and an evacuation. And then I realized, they're in line to vote. 90% of eligible voters registered. Voter turnout was 76%. And that's because in a country like Sierra Leone, voting is a matter of life or death. It is clean water, it is electricity, it is literacy, it's the ability to go to a hospital. Now, politics isn't easy. On average, it takes asking a woman seven times to run for office before she does. Then there's losing. I lost, and it's not fun. <laughs> I then worked on the campaign for the woman I lost to, and then we lost. <laughs> I'm still processing that. <laughs> but it's part of the journey. It's a long game of working towards the change that you want to see. And politics isn't sexy. It's doing things that people hate, knocking on doors. You pretended you're not home. I've, I've done a lot of door knocking. It's asking for money. It's Crackstarter. But I think we can learn something from Crackstarter. And stay with me. Technology is offering us new and innovative ways of taking something that is normally abstract and far removed and bringing it closer. In the 2012 US presidential election, $2 billion spent on TV advertising. $2 billion. With my co-founder, Dan Siegel, we created Super PAC app. And this was an opportunity for people instead of tuning out of those TV ads to tune in by holding up the app which recognizes the TV commercial and tells you who's behind it, how much money is behind it, and if those crazy claims are even true. Then there's startups like TurboVote. They're on a mission to make voting as easy as getting a movie from Netflix. During my nomination campaign, I met an incredible young woman. Her name is Mema and she came to our volunteer session. And we were going around and you know, talking about our interest in the campaign. And she said she had worked on three political campaigns. And that was more experience than most of us in the room. And it, it was more experience than me, and I was the candidate. And later, as we were chatting, my friend Ali says to Mema, so Mema, what do you do for a living? And she laughed. She says, I'm in grade 10. And we, we still laugh about that. Memma is known for her hard work and dedication, but she's also known for a blog. 
where she takes selfies with politicians. She goes up to members of parliament and she says, will you take a selfie? And then they pose on the cell phone and, and it's brilliant. And it's brilliant not only because I like seeing which MP is good at taking a selfie because there's an art to the selfie. <laughs> it's brilliant because at such a young age, Mema is making politics fun and exciting and relevant and she's making it her own. I like to say politics is what we make it and it's the best part of politics. Democracy is depending on us. So if politics is what we make it, are we going to make it something that we hate or rather something that we can be really proud of? Thank you.